All right, so we're attached in the mill in the little indexing head. Just come down and touch and zero the digital readout. And then we need to go 223 thousandths deep. So pull that back up, pull this over out of the way. And I just cut the hex on this, uh, that other breech plug that I ended up too short on the hex portion. So I, and I didn't move the mill, so I know this will come out at a half inch um, hex. So we're gonna go down to 223. There's 222 and a half. And looks like we're dead even with that top. Uh, with that top thread. Might be just a little bit lower. No, it's pretty much dead even with it. So, um, I'm going to kick the mill on. We're taking, let's see, we're 577 and on the outer portion of this around the edge, and we're going to 500. So, 77 divided by 2 is 37, 38 and a half. So that might be a little too much. Um, we'll do it in two passes. So right now the table is at 1.782. Write that number right here on the back of the vise. So we go to the same place. And let's go back. Oh, Seven eight two. Let's go back about uh, ten thousandths or so. There's sixty six. Well, let's go at sixty five. No. Let's go at sixty eight. So our last cut will be ten thousandths. I'm gonna go ahead and fire the mill up. <laughs> Climb milling gives a better finish. And we're going to advance sixty degrees. Pass. And that doesn't miss those jaws on that little check by very much. Back it out of the way. Loosen up. Another 60. That'll put us at 120. Tighten it back up. Another 60 takes us to 180.
clearance to 240. And last cut at 300. socket on that. Or an end wrench rather. It doesn't quite go. So we're going to advance up to the 1.782. there and let's move it back up to zero so we don't get confused and not cut one there's zero and one more pass <laughs> I should be shutting the mill off every time I advance this instead of sticking my hand around there. As long as I keep it a bit over the top of the chuck, I should be okay. Twenty. Should be the last cut at 300. Half inch wrench should go on there now, and it does.
Try a half inch socket as well. Not perfect. Okay, so let's move it around to zero again. Oops, I need to go back to 300 to get it out. Okay, so there we have it. Came out really good. Um, don't know what I did with the nipple. We'll pause, find the nipple, we'll thread it in, check the length, and see how we how close we came. All right, so here we've got the the two breech plugs. This one here is the original one. It's the one we just cut. And here's the nipple. Thread it in. Um, if you can see that, but they're pretty close to the same length. This one here was 1.134. This one ended up 1.132. And you can see that the shoulder of that nipple is down inside of there. So I am going to have to make a tool to tighten that in and out which isn't a big deal, and I'll do that in another video. Um, make the tool for that. So, and I have not looked in the bottom. See how the shoulder came out. Wow, that is right on the nose, it appears. I don't know how to show you that, really. But it looks like it, using that arc calculator, that planes right into the bottom of that nipple. Like I say, you're probably not going to be able to see that. Light's too bright and too dark without it. You just have to take my word for it. So the whole reason that I did this and I can see if I can show you here the difference in the holes. This breech plug on the right is completely shot out. That hole is dang near 50 thousandths and at about 35 you should change it. The breech there, the hole in that nipple is 28 thousandths. So we got seven thousandths of wear out before we need to change that. And then we should just be changing just the nipple. So you can see this breech plug on the right's got a lot more beef around the side of it than this one does, but we should be right at the 451 diameter. And that little shoulder doesn't scare me because as I tighten that in, um, that should move a little easier than that big shoulder wheel so we get a good flush seat against the back of the barrel and that should keep any kind of blowback or anything from coming out of there. Um, the 50 caliber breech plugs look pretty similar to the one on the left. This one's out of the 45 on the right. Um, so I could have just gone in with the 3 8 end mill and had it look almost exactly the same. But like I said, I'm not too worried about it. I'm not worried about the amount of pressure that'll come out of that and gas cut that at all. I think it should be fine. So anyway, that's a wrap on the breech plug. We'll have to make a tool to remove it, which
should be pretty simple. Like I said, I'll put that in another video. And um, we're going to put it in the gun and see how it fits. I'll put some layout fluid on it, see, see how it tightens in against the barrel, if we get good contact all the way around or not. Um, and then we'll go shoot it and see what kind of difference it makes. With my 50 caliber that I just built one for, it, the best group I could get with that thing at 100 yards was about six inches, and I just shot a group with it on Monday or Tuesday. I don't remember which day, it was a couple days ago. I shot a group with it that was about an inch and a quarter at 100 yards, so by changing the breech plug. So I think there's some validity to the uh, notion that the hole can be too big in there because it sure did make a difference on that other 50 caliber gun. Um, so anyway, there we go, that's a wrap. And we'll uh, do a tool in the next video. So thanks for watching and hit the like button if you like it. Thanks.